Also new here at 11, a Roland Heights man says he saw a UFO and has part of the spaceship to prove it. KKL News anchor Chris Holmstrom talks to him and goes in search of the truth. He used to carry a suitcase with him, wear a fancy looking hat. 87-year-old Jose Padilla of Roland Heights is recalling a brush with infamy he had as a boy. I used to see Robert Oppenheimer. That Robert Oppenheimer and mastermind of the atomic bomb. Padilla grew up in San Antonio, New Mexico, some 13 miles from where the bomb was first tested in 1945. Jose recalls seeing the dapper physicist frequently near the Albar, a local gathering spot still operating today. He had an office right behind the elbow bar. That office, now a shack Jose has visited frequently in recent years to try to make sense of a series of events in the summer of 45, starting with the A-bomb detonation at New Mexico's Trinity site near the White Sands Missile Range. I was drinking my chocolate milk on the kitchen when like a lightning showed up. The glow of a mushroom cloud could be spotted up to 150 miles away. He knocked me to the ground. A month later, Jose and a playmate were riding on his father's ranch and heard another boom. I told my, my friend, it must be another test from the bomb. And he says, no, it's not a bomb. Look at the smoke coming out of the ground. It appeared to be coming from an avocado-shaped aircraft. This is an artist's rendering. All of a sudden, three little, I would say kids, got off of it. They were kind of a sashaying and running around in circles. He says they resembled extraterrestrials he's since seen in the movies. They walk like us, but they look like a, like a fire ant standing up. Jose and I recently met up at a favorite spot of his, the Griffith Park Observatory. Did you have any fear of these creatures? Uh, no, sir. They had crashed at my father's ranch, and they needed help. Over the following 10 days, Jose says the military cleaned up the wreckage, while he and his friend watched from a nearby ridge. I still hear him pretty good. His buddy, Remy Baca, became a Marine, moved to Washington State, and worked in politics. Jose moved to Roland Heights and quietly raised a family. We had lost each other. The men were interviewed by investigative reporter and UFO researcher Paula Harris in 2012. Harris was investigating a claim by the son of World War II Army pilot William Brophy. The pilot's son told me the last missions of his father was to fly over that area and he said that when he flew over that he saw two little Indian boys on horseback. Harris believes those two boys were Jose and his friend. Though warned to stay away, they returned to their viewing ridge day after day. We were hiding behind cactuses. Jose says when soldiers took a break from cleanup, he and his friends entered the craft. The creatures were gone, but something else caught his eye. There was a, a, like a little dial. Jose yanked it out. I took the part and hid it in my garage. Chemical testing in 2015 by Frontier Analysis based out of Ohio revealed that the artifact was composed of aluminum mixed with silicon and copper. Now, that's a common metal mix found in engine parts. But the report went on to say that even though the isotopic ratios are terrestrial, an extraterrestrial source for the metals is not ruled out. No one knows what it is. What do you say to people who might think that you're crazy and the story is not true? Well, I've had a lot of people say that. Well, we will have more on Jose Patia's journey and a theory about a possible link between UFO encounters and environmental threats. That's tomorrow starting at 7 a.m. on KCAL News Mornings.